This episode was recorded in front of a live audience where viewers voted for the ingredients. It has been edited down from its original runtime. Larry had suggested a couple of times take the ingredient with the lowest vote count and brew with that. That's what we're going to do today. So you're voting against ingredients today, not for ingredients. These folks voted that today we are going to brew up a hooch. And boy, do I have some ingredients for you. <laughs> How about we start by unveiling what we're going to do today, and then we can move into chores and more. Today we're making a hooch. A hooch is essentially a wine made with unconventional ingredients. I know we've made some hooch style brews on the show before, but I wanted to make something that was really, really in the spirit of hooch. Like the type of thing that you would brew in your dorm room. We're going to level up from there. I am going to open a brew from Brews Lab 2, though. It's our Tezo tea. Because it's low alcohol, so it seems like a nice refreshing thing to have while we uh, while we work today. It's a very nice carbonation on it. Obviously no head on it, but there's a beautiful cascade of bubbles coming up out of there. So that's nice. Look at that color. It's still just all black lime. It's nice. What we're going to use for our main base today, cane sugar, granulated cane sugar. This is going to provide the bulk of our fermentable sugars. This is where most of our alcohol is going to come from. And then we're going to have a box for base. So like our additional fermentable sugar, acid, tannin, and wild card. We are going to choose the ingredient with the least votes. So you're not voting for ingredients today. You're voting against ingredients today. Our first box today is our base. Our primary fermentable sugar is going to come from this cane sugar. This is the fermentable sugar that we're going to throw on top of that. And I'll need y'all to run this through a brew calculator for me so we can determine just how much sugar we want to add to whatever our base ends up being. Your first option, Minute Maid Limeade Concentrate. 14% lime juice. Your second option, similar family, is Old Orchard Margarita Mix Concentrate. Your third option, Pina Colada Mix concentrate. Our last option is Old Orchard's Strawberry Daiquiri. So those are your options. I'm going to pull a hydro sample of our beer that seems to not be fermenting. This is our graph, so it's like a cider beer hybrid. We used a Kolsch yeast that doesn't seem to have kicked up any activity. Feels like kind of rare to get dead yeast. So there's speculation amongst the community that perhaps the wasabi has done something to prevent fermentation. A thing that I've never heard of, if there are antimicrobial properties to the wasabi, that's absolutely a thing that could happen. Our hydrometer is floating at just above 1.070, probably call that 1.072, 1.071. I don't think this is fermented at all. <laughs> yeah, Rob's got us at 1.072. So this hasn't budged in a week. That's a bad sign. Everybody says repitch. We could do Kivaik. I was going to go with US05 because we know and trust it. We should be able to expect a result from it. I don't know that a starter is necessary. I mean, this thing's full of nitrogen. So while y'all are making a decision on that, let's go ahead and check out this braggot we made. Looks like a tie between limeade mix and margarita mix. All right, that looks nice. I don't know that I'm gonna taste it today. It looks like we're using margarita mix as our fruit base. Currently we are brewing something margarita themed. Basically none of the rest of the ingredients that we have are going to contribute fermentable sugars. Is this going to be like big wine territory, wine cooler, 
Spritzer, what ballpark of refreshing to intense do you want this to be? Let's figure out how much sugar needs to be added to the margarita mix. This is 12 fluid ounces. There are 23 grams of sugar per serving, six servings. So 23 times six will give us the amount of sugar in a volume of 12 fluid ounces. And then how much granulated cane sugar should we be adding to that to get to whatever gravity y'all want to get to? And the sun has just like started beaming in. I've got this angelic. Oh kind of situation happening here. Erinor says, this is my five-year-aged grocery store margarita hooch. Me at a fancy tasting. That's, uh, that's some of this. And uh, what we have here is a margarita style uh, goza, brewed from the freezer aisle ingredients. So in box two, we've got our acid. Every great brew, You've got a good balance of acid, tannin, and sometimes sweetness if it needs it. Our boxes today still align with our Triforce of Balance. We've got Peach Mango Kool-Aid. The primary acid in here is citric acid. Second ingredient, Sharkleberry Fin. Kool-Aid mix, which appears to be orange, strawberry, and banana flavored. Sharkleberry Fin. Also, the primary acid in here is citric acid. Also has red 40. Good times. Uh, as we always say, it's the best of the reds. Oh yeah! There it is, Steve. We also have green apple Kool-Aid mix. Again, citric acid. And your final acid option, cherry limeade Kool-Aid. So we're gonna do two and a quarter pounds of sugar and the whole can of margarita mix. Two pounds, four ounces, which is just over cups. Nice. The biggest concern I have is we're not inverting the sugar on here, so nutrition is gonna be really key to getting this to finish. I have a feeling it's not gonna finish. I feel like this is one of those things that tries to convince you not to drink soda. It's like, there's this much sugar inside every can of soda you, you give your children. Charcoalberry Finn has doing the most written all over it, I feel like. All right, this looks lovely. Don't hate, appreciate. Well, let's crack this open and give it a taste. I showed you earlier, but I'll show you again. It is, you can see just a pinpoint of light. It is not being diffused. That is the good thing, it's very dark. But we've really had no trouble getting clarity out of these brews. Props to y'all, doing the most. All right, let's try the berry one. Strong smells of coughs are up on the nose, like real intense ethanol hanging out right above the liquid there. This is boozy, y'all. The heat from the alcohol is covered up by the heat from the peppers. There's a really nice, like somewhat searing, but also rolling heat. That kind of lingers, it's just now starting to fade. And that's right up front, and it's carried by a pretty intense acidity. It's the pomegranate, I think is what I'm sensing there. It's very strong tartness. And there's just like a pop of blueberry in the background. I really think that we need to stabilize and back sweeten this. And the tannin is good. The tannin carries the heat well. That's an interesting 
effect. It's it's a, a kind of a grainy tannin quality, which should mellow, but it, it carries the heat around. I think we should stabilize and back sweeten this though, because there's no sweetness left in it. And I think the sweetness can really offset the sourness. However, I think we are gonna need enough sugar that we're probably gonna have to rack to back sweeten this. So we could stabilize it today if y'all wanna do that, and then maybe back sweeten it at a later date. I think we're gonna wanna take this one up pretty high, like a 1.025, 1.03. Pretty, pretty sweet to fight against the acid in there. Cherry Limeade Kool-Aid is going to be our acid. We're gonna stabilize these with potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate. Potassium sorbate, use one rounded half teaspoon per gallon. And then potassium metabisulfite, we'll use one crushed up Campton tablet. I personally am not fearful of spooky white powders, but some people uh, have a sensitivity to them, which is very real. If you fall into that very, very, very small group of people, you wouldn't want to use these, but in a gallon jug like this, you could easily pasteurize. So you have voted for the limeade. Looks like I'll be having some charcoalberry fin with dinner. Our third box is our tannin box. Your options for tannin are Make sure I got this right. True blueberry herbal tea. It's got hibiscus, rose hips, orange peel, natural blueberry flavor with other natural flavors, blackberry leaves, wild blueberries, and blueberry leaves. Second option, wild berry zinger. Also an herbal tea. This one's got hibiscus, rose, hips, roasted chicory, orange peel, blackberry leaves, natural flavors of black raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, red raspberries, cranberries, and cherries with other natural flavors and citric acid. Your third option, black cherry berry herbal tea. Can you tell these came from a sampler pack? Hibiscus, rose hips, roasted chicory, blackberry leaves, hawthorn. Somebody tell me what hawthorn is. Natural black cherry flavor with other natural flavors, chamomile, and sweet cherries. Your last tannin option is country peach passion herbal tea. This one has orange peel, rose hips, hawthorn, chamomile, natural peach flavor with other natural flavors, blackberry leaves, hibiscus, peaches, citric acid, and paprika for color. Really interesting options in this one. I think what we'll do is just dangle our tea bag directly in here and then just pull it out before we rack to secondary. All right, cherry limeade, Kool-Aid, going in. It smells exactly how you would expect artificial cherry limeade to smell. It's like a color change magic trick. So the coffee mill. I always forget that there was crushed peppercorns in here. I don't think this needs any sweetening. There's just enough residual sweetness in there that it carries the flavors. I do think that this would be nice bottle condition. Honestly, what this would be nice with is nitro, but I'm not set up to do that. Cracked pepper is a little intense, but it's dying down. It wasn't, it was more intense the last time I tasted it. I think it would be nice bottle conditioned. I'm curious why you don't believe it should be. It tastes like coffee. It's got just a little bit of those like burnt caramel notes. It's not like a soft buttery caramel flavor. It's like a just on the edge of too far burnt kind of caramel flavor. The black pepper is there in both like a like tickles your tongue kind of way, but also in that spice, that kind of wicking spice on your tongue that's different from the spice that you get from hot peppers. Black Cherry Berry is our loser. There are four bags in here, and they don't, they don't have strings. So I guess we need to decide how many bags we want to stick in there now. 
This is how big the bags are for scale. Now I'm wondering if we just like open the bags and dump all the floof in there. All four doing the most. All four, all four, all four. I could put them into a adjunct bag. I like the idea of just dumping them all in. And we gotta get to our wild card box. First option, everybody's favorite. These are mandarin orange slices. Y'all remember these? She says my mom loves those. Ooh. We do have peach O's in here, peach rings. These would have gone really well with the peach tea. Just saying. Your third option. These are watermelon candies. Our last option oh. from the wild card box. Did you forget I got this yeah. one? Yo, pick that one. <laughs> Harry Bow's Fizzy Cola. Sour and tangy. Four bags of tea. The consensus is that we're just going to cut them open and eat them in. Oh, not even in the bag? No. Because it's like a lot to try and get back out of a carboy. And these, it, this is fine enough grain. Like, look how fine that is. Yeah. It should flock out with the yeast. Yeah, but like, why wouldn't you pour them into that tea bag? We talked about it, but also it's going to be a pain to get back out. Okay. So they're just going in. Yeet. We're going with watermelon candy. I heard. So you're you're coming to take the peachos. Yeah. Anna has taken away one of our ingredients after hearing the celebration. Uh, <laughs> cutting them open really releases the watermelon aromatics. Yeah, Aaron, or I'm definitely going to have to get a photo of this for the Instagram <laughs> when we're done. That's what it looks like before the water goes in. Let's get some water in here. <laughs> okay, I see a one point one oh six, one point one two four, one point one oh nine, one point one one two, one point one two. 1.117, 1 1.12, 1.129, 1 1.120. 1 1 1 well, the 1.120s have it. It is right at that line. Using Imperial Yeast's Paramount W04. If you want to be a voter for Brews Lab Ingredients, you can become a patron through our website. It's doingthemost.org, there's a Patreon link on the sidebar, or if you click join under any of our YouTube videos, you can be a YouTube VIP member, and those folks get to vote on the style that we brew each week here on Brews Lab. They're the ones who decided we were, vote, we were uh, making a hooch today. So uh, you can be part of that cast of, cast of characters that decides what Brews Lab is gonna be. Uh, until next week, thank you all for joining us. Happy brewing, stay safe, check on your neighbors, Check on your friends and uh, drink responsibly. <laughs>